this slightly awkward photo call is something of a moment. Two anti-establishment parties are now the government in Rome. The Five Star Movement and the Northern League are no longer barbarians at the gate, they're running the Italian state. Even though the markets seem to have reacted, you know, with, with some sort of relief at the announcement of, of this government, um, the fact is that, you know, we're looking at, at best paralysis, at worst, even more instability. Three months on from the election, we now know that the new prime minister will be Giuseppe Conte, an academic. But real power will be wielded by Matteo Salvini, leader of the League, and Luigi Di Maio, leader of the movement, in their rather peculiar coalition. This is not just any populist government. You know, this is a populist government or an anti-system government that brings the left and the far right together. Um, and these people have basically nothing in common other, their, other than their anti-system stance, um, the fact that they want to lower taxes, and the fact that they want to reverse the pension reform that had um, upped the age of, of retirement. Aside from that, they disagree on pretty much everything. The big problem for Italy is its debt pile, which is effectively one and a half times bigger than ours. The coalition's big spending plan could scare investors who currently lend to Italy and might wonder if they'll be repaid. That could create financial crisis. So will the coalition really pursue their plan? Reality will impose itself uh, upon the uh, fantasies, let's say, of the electoral uh, campaign by these two parties that were, were never in government. When they will be in government, and uh, Fortunately, there is a sort of a very powerful bureaucratic technocracy in Italy that is capable to run things much more than the government in office. The coalition then faces a choice of letting down its voters or risking its credit supply. That could trigger a new euro crisis. But that's not the only issue for Europe. The coalition is very eurosceptic. The Eurozone reform, banking reform, all of this is going to be more difficult and get delayed because um, the Italians are not going to facilitate uh, any of this. Der Spiegel, a German magazine, today published this cover. They fear a debt crisis, the end of EU reform, the coalition's coziness with Russia and the resurgence of nationalist populism across Europe. Most of the European country now has populist parties that are growing, some of them in government, as in Austria, now in Italy. And uh, yeah, there is a sort of contagion of uh, populism. And uh, the Italian outcome could boost some, uh, some populist uh, formation uh, here and there in Europe. Populists, people who rail against the elites in the name of the people, may also be boosted by economic nationalists abroad. The US is beginning to raise tariffs against us. If you take the European Union and you see the kind of tariff they charge, and then we don't, that's called not fair trade. I want fair trade. I like free trade, but I want fair trade. At a minimum, I want fair trade. European voters might want economic nationalists of their own to reply in kind. The old world is under strain. The rules-based international order has a growing list of enemies. Movements of the left and right who want to cut the free movement of goods, capital and people. Chris Cook. Well, earlier I spoke to a five-star movement MP, Manlio Di Stefano, and I asked him why Italian voters had decided to put his party and Lega into government. People understood that we can do uh, what, they, what they need. And why they understood this is is because is uh, since the very beginning, we did everything that we had promised during the campaigns. So uh, now, uh, when we brought to the Italian people our electoral program, and it's made of things that they were asking, like social welfare, the reform of the job, uh, environment, and mostly based also on uh, green economy and all the uh, typical green concept. It is something that we think it's, are important for, uh, for our country.
Look at the situation in Greece, because many will draw the comparison. You had a, a radical left government, Syriza. It's in a coalition with a nationalistic, populist, right-wing partner. Um, it came in with lots of very lavish promises, and it was going to take on the European establishment. And it has not worked out like that. And I wonder what lesson you draw from Greece. Luckily, we are not Greece, and in, in, in any in any sense you can imagine it. I mean, we are a strong economy. We are the, still the fourth bigger economy in Europe. So we have all the possibility to 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 find a good way to to evolve and to improve our economy and our society. Uh, but oh, but when I listen to someone in the European Commission say that uh, a, the, a good solution was applied on Greece, I say that maybe they would never been there because the, the social uh, system and the social economy is destroyed, I think, for the next 50 years. But how are the Europeans meant to behave with regard to Italy if, if and it's still only an if, you break some of the fiscal rules that the Eurozone has? they can't pick up the pieces if it goes wrong. So you, you're willing to accept full responsibility for it, I suppose, is the question. We want to go in the European Commission to redeal the, the agreement that we, that we assigned in the past. And the EU has to understand that if we don't act like this, we, I mean, Italy and all the other countries that are facing a, a crisis, in 20 years, uh, the EU will, will, will never exist. If Germany, France, or the other uh, big countries don't understand that we are we are, we are under the risk to destroy the European dream, uh, we will go straight there. Are you effectively saying to the Europeans, we, we're keen to stay, we're going to stay in the euro and the EU, but if you get in our way or you impose unnecessary rules on us, then the game is over for Italy and the EU. I don't want to go to the fight. We just started. I mean, I trust in you. I, we are uh, we are really uh, focused on make it work, and I think that uh, you will understand that there has to be a good cooperation. Everyone in the U.S. to understand that if Italy uh, is in trouble, you need to help it, help her, because the, the 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 opposite is to make Europe, Europe collapse. Some are saying what you have done is is bring, not the fascists, but a, a very right-wing nationalist party back into government in Italy of a kind that really hasn't been seen since Mussolini. I have respect for the six million voters of the Lega Nord. I don't think that they feel close to Mussolini. Said that, uh, the mistrust between each other brought us to create this agreement to start a government. We are a democratic party. We respect the human rights, the human dignity, and the international law. So uh, there will be no room for that. Manlio Di Stefano, thank you so much uh, for you. talking to us tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's a view from uh, an Italian MP from the Five Star Movement. What is all of this going to mean for the old guard in Italy and indeed for the old guard? in the rest of Europe. I'm joined now from Geneva by Sandra Gozzi, an Italian MP for the Democratic Party, centre-left, and until today, Italy's Europe Minister, but no longer. Very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Look, I wonder what you make of what we just heard. They're, they're re really talking about a kind of existential crisis for the EU if the EU doesn't adapt or concede some points to their government and to, to the way the Eurozone is run. Well, I think that is a very wrong approach, uh, and I, I totally disagree with the method which is mentioned by my colleague Mario Di Stefano to you. And I think that uh, we are in front uh, of a, op opposite to a paradox alliance of uh, extreme right uh, of the Lega and uh, unpredictable uh, movements such as the Five Star Movement. And this uh, government contract uh, is very ambiguous, is very contradictory because either they go and in, in an open conflict with the EU, and in that case, they maybe can uh, implement the contract, but that would mean to have a clash with the European Union, or they do not clash with the European Union, in that case, they won't implement uh, their program. So, yeah, we are in front of a very worrying situation, because either my country is going to open a battle against the EU, 
or uh, we we will uh, we don't know what is going to to implement so i am very skeptical i hope of course for the sake of my country the sake of europe that uh, this uh, new government can bring can can bring some positive result but I got serious doubt about their capacity to do so. Well, let me give you another alternative, which would be that the European establishment listens to the voters all over the place, not just in Italy, saying we don't like the system. And the problem, isn't it, is it not, that the, the, the likes of you who've been in charge for so many years are just sitting there saying the voters have got it wrong and we've got it right. And actually, you just have to bend and say, look, if the voters don't like it, the voters don't like it, how do we deliver what the voters want? First of all, I haven't been in charge for so many years. <laughs> I've been in charge in 2014, and I, 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 I represent the political renewal in the center left. And of course, I have suffered all the mistakes which I made in the past. On there, I fully join you, but uh, I'm not part of the establishment and I'm not part of the old ruling class. And it is true that certainly at European level, uh, many serious mistakes have been made. Uh, it is clear that the austerity recipe, which have been implemented by the Monti government in Italy, uh, have not brought the positive result and they have uh, got uh, very strong and negative social consequences, which are at the origin of the success of the Five Star Movement. On the other hand, uh, uh, the absence of the Union uh, during the migratory crisis, uh, leaving uh, Italy al al alone in 2015, it has, bring, uh, it has brought uh, fuel in the engine of the uh, extreme right of the Lega. So this is clear, and we have been denouncing that right. uh, for years. There have been some improvement, but it's, it has been too little too late. That is clear. On that, certainly some, uh, some, uh, some move is, very, is badly right. needed. Well, the, 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 you're just saying the same as the, as the populists, and they're just saying it more clearly and more forcefully, and they're, they're going to demand something happens, some action, which is what clearly what the people of Italy want. I mean, this is, this is democracy, isn't it? But, uh, you know, uh, I re always respect democracy, but this doesn't mean that I have to share uh, the, major the choice of the, of the majority. I have to respect that. And I have to work to persuade the majority to give uh, the consensus to, to my party next time. So I fully respect the democratic choice of Italians. I do not share the program for which the Italians uh, yeah. gave the majority to the extreme right and the Five Star Movement because I do not believe that uh, unilateral threats uh, can bring uh, any result to Italy. So I, I strong, I'm strongly convinced that uh, the, uh, pro to promise uh, uh, the reform of the retirement system, uh, the increase of the public debt, uh, universal income to all the Italian families is feasible. So you can win the election making uh, uh, great promises, but if you cannot implement the promises, you, you got a problem. You got a problem either, either in Ro only in Italy or in Italy and with our European partner. And this is what I fear because uh, it is clear that the promises uh, concerning the economic measure of the Five Star Movement, the promises of the Lega that has promised to expel half, mil, half, uh, half uh, 500,000 uh, immigrants from Italy are simply false. Right. They cannot be implemented. You, it is Sandra, easy to win a, a, an election with that. It is, it is impossible to rule a country, and, and you are going to see. Sandra Gozzi, we, we, it, it is going to be, well, it's going to be an interesting time for everybody. Uh, on that, I know everybody agrees. Sandra Gozzi, thank you very, very much. Very interesting. Thank you.